Hello everybody. Today we will be talking about a special part of the immune system that is the complement system. Complement system consists of a series of proteins which complement or augment the functions of the antibodies. Again, what are complement system? Complement system consists of complementary proteins. There is a whole multiple series of proteins, the multiple proteins. And what are the functions of these proteins? These proteins basically complement the immune system and complement the inflammatory reactions. Or we can say these proteins augment the immune system work as well as augment the inflammatory response. We will see in this lecture that what are the complement proteins, how they are activated, why they are activated what are the advantages of activating these proteins, what are the benefits to human beings by activating these proteins and what are the dysfunctions of these proteins. If these proteins are over activated, what type of problems are produced to us or if these proteins are under activated, what happens to us. First we will talk about the normal function and then we will talk about the dysfunction of the complement system. Let us start with the normal function. The first question is where the complement proteins are present and where they are produced in the body, right? Actually complement proteins are mainly produced by the liver cells. So the source of complement protein in our body is mainly hepatocytes. Liver cells, you know they produce lot of proteins. As everyone knows that liver cells synthesize albumin, liver cells, hepatocytes produce many coagulation factors. In the same way, liver cells also produce a series of proteins which are about 20 or more than 20 proteins and those proteins are called complement protein. Let us suppose this is your circulatory system. Here is your circulatory system. Here is your liver and liver cells are constantly synthesizing and releasing complement protein and circulation, right? These different complement proteins which are produced, right? Okay. These different complement proteins which are produced in circulatory system, right? There is not one protein, there are about 20 or plus proteins and these proteins interact with each other. And do you think in a normal person blood who does not have any inflammatory reactions or any immunological reactions going on, do you think in normal person's blood complement proteins are present? Yes. What do you think? Yes, they, yes, they are. Complement proteins are present in your blood all the time. Is that right? Basically complement, complement proteins are proenzymes. These are inactive proteins. These are inactive enzymes. They are constantly being produced by the liver, added to your blood, right? And but they are activated only during the inflammatory reactions and immune mediated reactions. Is that right? So major source of complement protein is liver. That is what a good doctor knows. But there are some doctors who are great doctors. They know more than this. That some of the complement proteins are secreted by the macrophages. Another, another important exception. Complement protein number one is mainly produced by the GAT mucosa. That is an exception. Most of the complement proteins are produced by liver. But if you really want to know exceptional things, many of them are also produced by macrophages. And complement protein number one is mainly produced by GAT mucosa. Is that right? Anyway, all of them are normally present in your blood. Is that right? Now, let us see how they work, right? We take a practical example that there is a bacteria present in your tissue, okay? We make one bacteria here. What do you think? It is cocos or bacillus? Okay, he has high general knowledge. He knows it is bacillus, not cocos, right? Cocci are actually circular, spherical, right? So, this is one bacteria. And of course, let us suppose this bacteria has these antigens. These are bacterial. These are bacterial antigens and you know when immune system is activated, immune system make antibodies against the bacterial antigens. Is that right? 
let's suppose you have made an antibody against this bacterial antigen and you know antibodies are basically yeah they are two heavy chains antibodies and they are having two light chains all these chains are held together by yes what are these disulfide bonds remember the structure of antibody antibody is a tetrapeptide antibody is a tetrapeptide having two heavy chains and two light chains held together by disulfide bonds this is a basic structure of the antibody let's suppose when this bacteria entered in your body it activated the humoral immune response and eventually against these antigens antibodies are produced right there are many types of antibodies right but antibodies which can specifically activate the complements they are immunoglobulin belonging to m class igm or immunoglobulins which are ig g you know there are five main classes of antibodies right there is igm there is igg there is ig a there is ige there is igd the complement activating antibody classes are only igg and igm is that right let us suppose that against these bacterial antigens our immune system has produced igg or igm any one of these is produced once your immune system has produced these antibodies let's suppose here is your immune system this is your immune headquarter right you must be knowing that macrophage present the antigen to t helper cells macrophage take up the antigen present to t helper cell and t helper cell convert the b cells into plasma cells and these plasma cells secrete the yes what is it antibodies basically this antibody is tetrapeptide but in a simple way i have shown it like this now these antibodies which are produced against this antigen eventually these antibody will reach here and what will happen these antibodies will yes they will react with the antigen this is an antibody and now this antibody is reacting with the target antigen is that right when antibody reacts with the antigen there is a change in this tail of the antibody it undergo the change it is just like that thing that if a boy is standing there is no change but if we interact with something there is a change in boys in the same way when antibodies are not with the antigen they don't have a specific change but as soon as this antibody molecule react with the antigen there is a change in it what is the change in it let me tell you let's suppose this is the fc portion of the antibody and fc portion of the antibody has a special loop here right this point these two points can activate the complement but normally when antibody is not binding with the antigen these loops are not available to the complement protein but as soon as antibody bind with the antigen these loops become exposed we say antibody is activated and here is the answer you have lot of antibodies moving in your blood but they are not activating the complements all the time why they are not activating the complements because the antibodies which are moving in your blood or antibodies which are present in your body fluids they are without antigens until they are without antigens they are not having the capability to activate the complement system but as soon as antibody bind with the antigen it undergoes a transformational change and it exposes special domains which can bind and activate the complement system advantage of this fact is that antibodies will not inappropriately activate the immune uh, complement system and antibodies will only activate the complement system when antibodies are sticking with the antigen that means antibodies will activate the complement system only 